Hello crafters! Welcome back to my channel and thank you for stopping by. Uh, we are going to start working on our first tutorials for uh, the Farmhouse Summer Paper Collection. That is a Country Craft Creations design team project and I am going to be making the Legacy Cookbook. So we'll see you in a couple seconds. Thank you. Hi crafters! So want to talk about what our first steps are in making this album. So first off, as you saw in the walkthrough, I am going to be using the Farmhouse Summer uh, paper collection for, um, uh, for the Country Craft Creations Design Team project uh, called Legacy Cookbook. And this Legacy Cookbook is going to be, when I'm finished with it, and um, not necessarily on the walkthrough, but when I'm finished with this, I am going to put uh, like my grandmother's, possibly my great-grandmother's, and if I have any copies of any recipes that they wrote, I would put copies of that in the cookbook. I'm not going to put every recipe that they wrote, but I will be putting in some samples of that. And then pictures of my mom. And I also am going to include um, pictures of my two sisters and myself. And maybe there'll be a page or two left open so that um, our girls can uh, put their recipes in there as well. So. In the beginning, it might be some more bigger pictures because of our grandmothers or great-grandmothers, but toward the end, I'll be making the pictures maybe a little bit smaller with the recipes themselves. So we're going to start out with a Farmhouse uh, Summer by Cartabella, and this is from Country Craft Creations. I didn't buy uh, a collection kit. Um, you know what? I may have bought a collection kit with additional papers because I do have the stickers and uh, several other items for this book. What we're going to do is we're going to walk along and we're going to make um, the base of this uh, um, mini album together. I'll we'll put all the flips and flaps in. Decorating, I'm going to do that off camera, but I will, as you saw already, we'll do a walkthrough before we even start the construction of it. So I want to talk a little bit about the construction of it and about the papers and the collection and some of the things that I do ahead of time. So this is our collection. So one of the first things that I do is I do go through the papers and I take a look at um, what possibly the cutouts are and what's on either side. And typically what I do is I take um, one of each of the cut aparts. Sometimes I take two. This one I have in here because um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing something different with this frame, like uh, using it actually as a frame. But what I did then was um, a few of the other pages. I've already um, gone ahead and I cut out uh, these cut aparts from that page just so that they're ready and I can think about these or use these to measure for if I'm going to put a waterfall in or something like that. So I've got those cut apart and I usually do the one or two pages up front and this is the other set that I, oh this is a tag or a cut apart. I usually do those up front, the two that I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using and um, so that's what I've done. I've done two of these sheets up front and then I'm leaving these other ones off to the side till I decide what I want to do with them. So these are the other ones I'm putting off to the side uh, just to figure out what I'm going to do with them. These I did not cut yet because um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to need them in the album or if I'm going to use the other side with the pattern paper. So I'm just leaving these to the side. Makes it easier. I don't mix it up with other things. And this one, I'm still debating on whether I'm going to use this as an actual picture frame and then use this as a tab below. So that's why I'm kind of putting this off to the side. Now the other thing that I did do is some of the paper collection that were, was my favorite, uh, the papers that I liked the best. I'll give you one example of the paper collection. This one here is one of my favorites. So I bought an additional um, 12 by 12 sheet of that. And um, I did that with several of the pattern papers, but not all of them. 
but I would say at least half of them I bought an additional uh, sheet. So my suggestion for you would be to go through the collection. If you're buying a collection and you're going to get the uh, stickers that go with the collection, um, decide what other ephemera or things that you want. This is the sticker page for the collection. Um, go through that and find out what other papers that you really enjoy, you really like. You might like to buy an extra sheet or two just so you have it. And, you know, really no harm, no foul if you don't use it in your mini album. If it's your favorite, you could make some cards out of it. And it's kind of like a win-win situation. So I also um, bought both of these, or got both of these chipboard phrases and accents for my book. And what I don't use in the album, I will use in um, uh, possibly some cards at the end. And the other thing that I got in my collection was the uh, solid papers. I've got those and I'm going to use those throughout the album for some different pages. And so what I've done ahead of time, and I told, I've told everybody that I am doing this from now on, where I did my, um, my mini album covering already. So this is, this measures um, eight and a half, eight and a half across, and nine and a half down. So it's nine and a half by eight and a half, or eight and a half by nine and a half. And then the spine is three inches by nine and a half. So something that I frequently do when I am doing an album and um, I'm doing my hinge, I like to draw out my hinges. And I actually have a hinge guide and I probably should put that, uh, put, leave this all together because um, I frequently do three inch, uh, you know, um, what do you call it, three inch, uh, Oh my gosh, um, I can't think of it. Is that terrible? I just said it. Anyways, so for the binding, what I do is to know what I need to have for my binding. I wanted five uh, hinges on my binding. So what I did was I did a half an inch up front. This is my check mark means that it lays flat. This is the hinge. These two come together. This lays flat. These two come together, 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 and this lays flat. So if I look at all the ones that come together, this half inch and this half inch makes one inch. And this half inch and this half inch makes this one two inches. This half inch, this half inch, and another inch to two is three inches. Half inch, half inch, three plus one is four. Half inch, half inch uh, makes five. So I know that I need five inches so far of my hinge. And then I go to these other half inches that are laying flat. They're my gussets. And I have one, two, that's half inch, half inch makes one. Half inch, half inch makes two. Half inch, half inch makes three. So if I take five plus three equals eight, then I know that I need to have my cardstock at eight inches, and I cut it then lengthwise by nine and a quarter, because it was nine and a half, nine and a quarter, or nine and three eighths, just depending upon how long you want that um, to the um, on the back hinge of your album. So that's a quick overview of how I'm doing this. The next thing that I'm going to do today is I am going to put my hinges into my book. And after this is all put together, if I, and I'm going to uh, put these flat pieces back to give them a little bit of sturdiness on the base edge, this will end up measuring two inches if I put those to the back. If I don't want to put them to the back, you can see it's two inches. If I don't want to put them to the back, it will then measure three inches because adding an additional inch on. So that's a little bit about my um, hinge, my hinge um, build, how I'm how I put it together. 
and um, you can choose how you'd like to put everything together as well. I will also attach the link uh, down in the box for the uh, video that I have about putting this um, this mini album together. So I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind today. I'm like having a hard time <laughs> even talking. I apologize for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to get this put into my mini album and I'm also going to go ahead and cut my pages for the mini album and when I get back I will show you what I'm going to be doing with those pages and we're going to talk about the size and getting that onto this album. So I will be back in just a couple seconds. Hi, so I've gotten pages all set. And one of the things that I like to do first is to get my cover paper picked out and my cover paper put on along with the hinges and um, all of that. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the, the pages for the album. I cut these. Five pieces of these are cut at eight, eight and nine and a quarter. And then five are cut at eight and ten and a quarter and then there is a half inch scored on either end and when we put these together <clears throat> I usually put my other piece right into the inside and then glue these down as well as I do miter those hinges uh, yeah the hinges before I uh, glue them down but the other thing that you might have to do is I did cut these at um, a nine and a quarter but sometimes you might have to take just a sixteenth of an inch off of here just to make sure that when this folds over it doesn't make this all you know bumpy or you know that it was it's too tight of a fit so um, especially because they're going under these uh, tabs here they will not um, it won't show if they're a little bit shorter than exactly to the end so um, I just cut off about a sixteenth of an inch and then they tend to go to, together a little bit better. So we're going to get this last one done. I've got the other four done. And um, we're going to go ahead and put the pages into, into the album as well. And I'm going to try something different I think on this album. I don't know, I'm going to start off with that and see how it works. I've seen some people where they build their pages, you know, right on this, which that's what I normally do. I build it right from here and go up. But um, I'm decided this time, I think I'm going to cut out the pattern paper and then I'm going to build it on the pattern paper and go up from there. So the first thing that we want to do it, for our hinges is to get our hinges get this put together for to go in and uh, we can put these all in together one of the things though that I want to encourage you to do is with these hinges I go back and forth on these an awful lot before I get my pages on and then even after I get my pages on now if it's a cardstock that cracks easily um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that but this is the Artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations and I'm pretty confident about the quality of this so I'm not as worried about this cracking as I would other cardstock. So I'm going to put this um, piece to the back of the page and I'm going to put this on and this actually can go all the way down to the bottom but I don't want to do that. Um, and the reason why it can is because um, I mitered all of these hinges. After I put this on, I mitered all these hinges. And the reason why I did it that way is because I, I could get the end of it really nice and clean to the end of the book. So I am going to put these pages on. And I have tried them already. But what I'd like to do is keep them about an eighth of an inch back off of my the bottom of my hinge and I'm going to put them flat to make sure that they are going on here flat so 
I am going to start off by just gluing this front piece. I'll glue the back of the hinge when we're done. Some of you might ask why am I not using score tape? Well, as I've said many times to others on my channel that I prefer glue over score tape. I think over time the glue melds with the paper and with it melding with the paper it doesn't dry up, that it bonds with the actual paper. Okay, now I've got this off just a little bit, so bear with me here. Because the first one is usually the most important one to get your that looks good. So it bonds with the paper and over time it should uh, really adhere the fibers together with that glue. That's what I read when I googled this and you can see I'm about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch back. And the reason why I do that is because this may, helps it to lay a little bit flatter in my album. But when I come back here I'm going to have to come back and get underneath this. and put that down as well. If I have to, I can always come back and put more glue on our page. Should have cleaned that off before. So then we're going to go along and we're going to take these other pages and I'm going to put the seam to the back and I'm always going to dry fit this so that I can make sure that I'm lining these pages up with the other pages. And I think I'm going to turn it this way because I'm going to be able to see it a little bit easier for putting these in straight. <laughs> I sometimes have to laugh because I feel like I do so much moving around with the with my book when I'm putting it together that anybody watching me would wonder what the heck I'm doing. I'm going to try doing this on this side this time. See if I can get both sides done at one time. All right.
Okay, so that's all of our hinges in. And I'm not always perfect on it, but this one looks pretty good. They look, you know, just like a half of an inch apart. So yay me this time. <laughs> this is probably the best I've done. So thank you for watching me do this. <laughs> So the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I am double matting the front covers and um, the back covers. And so what I have done for this is I'm going to be using this artisan cardstock as my mat for the inside covers and the outside. So I'm not, I don't know what uh, cardstock I'm going to use in there yet or, or pattern paper, sorry. Um, the reason why is because I'm thinking about putting a pocket in uh, on this front cover or or on the back cover. I haven't really decided yet. So um, if I'm going to do a pocket, I may not need to cover the whole thing in cardstock. So that's why I'm just going to wait on that one. And then we're going to go ahead and do this to our back cover. Always dry fitting. I don't know what I got on the back of this, but it doesn't show up on the front, so I'm using it. Not trying to waste my paper. So we'll get um, our pattern paper on the back of here. Now the covers, again, as I said, were, where did I put my sheet of paper? My covers were um, eight and a half by nine and a half. So uh, the cover papers, the solid, should measure eight and three quarters by nine and three quarters. The pattern paper on the back, if you want to do a solid piece of pattern paper, would then be eight and a quarter by nine and a quarter. And the spine measures um, three and nine and a, three by nine and a half. And that is for the outside spine. So with that spine, I'm going to be using this paper. So the spine would be three by nine and a half. So the solid paper, what I'm doing for the double matting, for some reason, the way I mat these, the spine, is um, I always start with the same size as the spine because there is this little openness right along here. So I go right to a three by the width, the length though, is nine and three quarters. So the solid on here is going to be three by nine and three eighths. And the pattern paper on here is two and seven eighths by nine and a quarter. And that'll give you a nice fit on the back of here for your spine and just off the edges a bit. So once I wrap, once I wrap this spine, um, once the spine gets wrapped and um, put on here, it always seems to make the spine just a little bit bigger on the outside. So that's why I do it. it I measure it at three by um, a little bit shorter than the length because the length doesn't seem to doesn't seem to matter as much as the width. So just take my word for it. It does work. For some reason, I feel like I'm getting this upside down. So I'm going to put this on the spine. Try to get that evenly on there. Ugh, I should have done this from the beginning. I was
it's going to put a different pattern on the spine, but I just absolutely adore this paper. So, I just want to make sure they're all facing the right way. Or at least the same way, huh? So that's how our front and back. I'm not going to go ahead and I am not going to um, decorate them, but I will go ahead and put the papers on. All right. Let me just dry fit this again so I can make sure I'm... Right. I like to have the covers done. I just... Part of it is is because I like to know which pattern I'm going to put on the cover. A lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say that they um, do their cover last because they want to use the pretty colors inside their album. Well, I'm kind of the opposite. I like to use my favorite papers on the front of the album and because I feel like that's where they get displayed the most. And even on the back, because if you see someone carrying it or holding it, you can also see the beautiful colors on the back of the album. So that's kind of my feeling on it. And um, I respect you if you don't feel the same way as I do. But that's kind of how I am. I like to have it on the outside so in case they don't ever look at the inside, they have an opportunity to see my favorite paper on the outside. So, I'm going to put this on. That is so beautiful. I love this collection. Oh, and you, I can't wait to share with you. I just got my um, new uh, design team package. So that'll be coming up. Um, actually, I don't know. Maybe it'll even go up before this. But, oh my gosh, wait till you see the papers that are in that. I'm so excited. There we go. There we go, that's nice and, oh, isn't that beautiful? And for the most part, I don't use, um, I don't use ribbon to close my, to close my albums. Uh, that's, like I said, that's for the most part. That doesn't mean that I don't sometimes, but I usually know ahead of time whether I'm going to do that or not. So here we've got our album pages all set and ready to go. Got plenty of room on the back and room with that hinge for the space in there and this space right here. So um, if I wanted to put a big pocket on the back and one on the front in case I wanted to put other, um, you know, other recipes or pictures in this album, this album's going to live up at our family cottage so that the whole family can enjoy it. So that's what I've got for right now. And... Um, I will be back with when I get started on the pages and I'll show you where I'm at and what I've decided to do. And first off, I said I wasn't going to do decorating on the camera, but what I will do is we probably will put down the initial uh, patterns and on the uh, pages because of how I'm thinking about doing it this time. And then any kind of embellishing I will do on my own and do that when I come back. But we'll walk through the album until it's done and let's just see where we can go with all the decorating so all right thanks so much for right now and there could be a little bit more added on to here if there isn't um then the next video will be up in the day or so thanks so much bye hey crafters welcome back here um let's talk a little bit about the pages and what i've done and kind of what's happened um we've got the uh front pages on here, the spine and back cover, and these are all double matted with the blue and uh, the blue artisan cardstock. And what I decided to do was to try out something different this time, and this is going to be different on the pages. It's not going to be different 
uh, for, for the front, but um, or the front or the back covers, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I was doing for this part of the uh, the book or the mini album. And I also said that I wasn't going to be doing decorating, but I think I'm going to be doing the decorating as I go along. So first of all, again, we have pages here. I want to talk about these pages are um, I'm sorry, eight by nine and a quarter. So they're eight by nine and a quarter. And um, there are five pages in the book. There's also pockets in the book. And I decided I was going to be putting some inserts into these pockets. Not done this before exactly this way. And so one thing that I, I did that... Um, I think I scored too heavily on my cardstock, so I put on here, not sure if you saw, but some black tape um, for this uh, book that's going to go or, you know, pull out. See, again, I'm still having mouth problems. <laughs> my brain and my mouth is not engaging at the same time. I'm so sorry. I can't even blame it on to, you know, this morning on to mimosas or anything, but um, maybe I didn't have enough coffee. So I've got these pull-out booklets that are going to go into the page. And these booklets, their pages are, one is going to be seven and a half by nine. And then I'm going to uh, make another booklet or page to that. And that one is going to be, whoops, helps if I have it turned over the right way, right? that one so this was seven and a half by nine this one was we're gonna go to that this page was eight eight by nine so we've got one that's seven and a half by nine and this one is oh i'm sorry it's eight and one eighth by nine so this one is seven and a half by seven and a half by nine. This one is eight and one eighth by nine. So that way, because when we scored this one, we're going to score one side at a half an inch, and then the next one we're going to score um, at an eighth of an inch over, so that we can end up making this little gusset in here. I think that'll just help us for our pages. As you can see, that's kind of a one eighth inch. Um, to that and what happens with that is that just easily slides in to this page and we will have this extra flap on all of them and in order to hold this down what I did is I put ribbon to hold this page down before I start working on this page back here okay I hope that wasn't too confusing for anyone I kind of went off onto different parts of this. So what we're going to work on, starting off, I'm going to pull this booklet out because we're going to work on the first page. And on this first page, what I did, I told you I was going to try working on um, a sheet of the pattern paper and glue everything down onto this and then it just assembles right onto this page. So let's talk about this page and what I've put together. So what I did with this is I took a piece of the patterned cardstock. Where is my ruler? Pages. Um, this measures at, okay, so our pages, these pages are eight by nine and a quarter. So our pattern paper is going to be seven and seven eighths by nine and one eighth. So seven and seven eighths by nine and one eighth. That's what my base is starting with. And then I added two flaps onto here. And the flaps were, or are, they are four and a half by six and six and three quarters four and a half by six and three quarters both of them are 
And let me check one thing real quick. Um, I said this was four and a half. Um, I'm sorry, this page was five because there is a half inch for the uh, hinge to the back. So again, this page is five by five by six and three quarters. So this page is five by six and three quarters, and this one is five by six and three quarters. And this does flap over each one of these, and then we're going to cut pattern paper or plain paper to go on the back of these uh, flaps. And I cut this from the patterns and solids, and the size of this is six and three quarters by four and five eighths. So I, that fits right in here. And I'm going to apologize again. I'm a little bit out of my uh, <laughs> normal zone. And the reason is, is because, again, I'm doing this a little bit differently than I normally do it. So I, my apologies right up front. And if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments box. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm going to put this on the back of both of these. I want to, I want to make sure I'm not, I didn't tell you something wrong. No. Oh no, that was right. So actually, well, no, that's, okay, I see. I, I knew I was telling you wrong measurements. So these, these flaps were six and three quarters by five. And the five is a half inch that has been um, glued onto here. So I'll put those measurements up again on, um, on the video as we go so that you get it written down. So, and then this, this paper was one eighth of an inch smaller. So this is four and a half by six and five eighths. Okay, sorry about that. I'm usually not this ditzy when it comes to um, my measurements and what I'm doing. Kind of threw myself off here today, so I am very sorry. I guess the biggest thing about these flaps is, is that you want them to either overlap or meet in the middle. And I chose this time to make them overlap because I wanted a little bit more um, body to my cardstock. So I've got these on the inside here and I will decorate these with some of the stickers or however I decide. And then I added a pocket down to the bottom of here and this pocket, it measures seven and seven eighths, but with a half inch, this would then measure at eight and seven eighths. So you need to cut a piece of cardstock eight and seven eighths, and then score a half inch here, score a half inch on this side, and a half inch on the bottom. So the height of this, and this can be any height you really want it to be, but the height of this is um, three, three and oh, three and three quarters. Three and yeah, three and three quarters. And what I did then is I took and I punch, used my punch along the top of this pocket to give it a little bit more of a flare. And then on the back of here, I added cart, uh, some paper from the back of this paper here, and I just pulled that from my stash, what I had left over. 
And then this is one of the 4x4, four four. I think there's a 4x4, four 4x4 four. Four four cards. And, yep, it's 4x4, four four, so I just made it um, like a 16th of an inch all the way around or an eighth of an inch all the way around and just so that it was on black. And I kept this part of this open so I can tuck a tag in there if I want to or a recipe or a picture. So then this all closes up like this. And this is one of the four by six cut aparts. And then I just backed it with the black cardstock. And then I just cut some uh, papers. Now these papers, I wanted to do wood and I did not have wood in this collection. So I took a little bit of creative license and pulled some of this wood paper from my stash. And there is plenty of uh, different items that you could put onto here and do something different. You probably could even do something like this, but maybe change out this paper down here. Um, and I just covered my flaps with this uh, whitewashed wood. And what we're going to do then is once we're done here doing all of these, we're just going to take this whole piece and glue it on to our page. All right, so let's take this. And I like to take the my my uh, mini albums and I like to put them to the side when I attach the pages because I, I can see a little bit better where it's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put glue in the back. Here you can see the tabs on the back of that um, uh, pattern paper from the flaps. Here are the tabs from my pocket on the bottom. You can see they're all attached back there and they'll make a nice clean attachment to our page. And again, I'm using my glue rather than score tape or a tape. Just like glue better. And it also gives me a little bit of wiggle room to get everything placed where I want it placed. and. Um, edged where I wanted it to be edged. So then that goes down there. I'm going to rub on the back of here. And then for the second page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along and um, cut another sheet of the pattern paper. And I'll pick out a piece of pattern paper for this side right away as well, so that I have those two working and matching together. But now this page is on. So what we're going to do then is take a look at our flap for this page. We've got this little flap and this is going to go into this pocket and it is going to go over our page right here and we have ribbons each one of these ribbons i measured at 12 inches so two pieces of 12 inches and i'm going to use those to tie this shut so what i've chosen to do is i am not going to finish off the inside of this or this until the end of the book. But I am going to put paper on the top of here because it's right in the front and um, I wanted to uh, put something on there so I can watch it as I go along. So what I'm going to do, actually, that's silly. What I want to do is come along here and put my um, cardstock. This is from the um, again from the solid papers from Cartabella and this 
What I did with this, as far as if you're wondering about the measurements, basically what I did is I took um, I took some pattern paper that has been for the cutoffs or items that I've done some cutting on, this piece, so you can see that's from the cover. I took this piece and found one that was the thickest so that I could put that down there and then whatever was remaining on here I put the color the solid cardstock so you shouldn't have to cut any more pattern paper in order to put something down here that works because you should have cutoffs from your front cover or one of these other ones so just trying to be a little careful with um, with the pattern paper that I'm using so then I'm going to put going to match this one up with this piece of paper leaving a little bit of a black line in between. I thought about putting a piece of uh, pattern paper or a strip in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet so I'm just going to leave that until I uh, go a little bit further and cut along a little further. And what I'm talking about is, here let me show you. I was possibly thinking about taking something like this and putting it over that. And I think that it, oh, this side, this might even look better because it's got blue in it. So uh, this isn't really going the right way, so I'm not sure I would use this, but, and I, I don't really want this to compete with this pattern in here. So I might even take, you know, this pattern and, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this one, if I wanted to get something with a little bit more of the pattern, I may use something like this. I'm not sure. It may be too much. So I have decided to just leave it until my next go round. So let's put this in. I'm going to put this in and that slides in very easily. And what's nice about that eighth of an inch is that it gives a little bit of leverage there. And then we're going to go ahead and just you can do one of two things. You can do a ribbon like I'm doing, like tying this up, or you could do something that is, um, that just is a, oh, what do you call it? A tab that will, um, that's not a very good tie. <laughs> oh, goodness. I like to have nice tied ribbons, but I don't know. Between my mouth and my brain and my tying today, I might. Maybe I should delay doing any more videos today because of my brain. So that's how that's going to hold that down. And so we'll be good to go for those next pages for that one. But the last thing that I want to do is I wanted to uh, get started on the cover. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put a pocket on this cover that is um, got some gussets in here. So when I cut this pocket, I, I used some leftover black cardstock and I wanted to, because I'm trying to use up some of my black cardstock, I have so much of it that I have cut off pieces that I use it for mats, I use it for a lot of different things, but sometimes I feel like I have so much because I like to do my, um, my mini albums in black. So I took this piece and what I did a little bit differently is this going across is seven and seven eighths. And then I took two cutoffs of paper and I scored, this is two inches, two inches by five and one eighth. Two inches by five and one eighth. And then I scored at every half inch to make this a gusset for my pocket. All right, and then the length of this, I actually had a half inch on here. This was this was five and three quarters. Five and three quarters um, was the length, and then I just scored at one half inch down there. Normally, when I make this kind of a pocket, I measure the whole thing and I make my gussets right out of that 
uh, piece of the the cardstock that I'm cutting but since I was trying to use some up I decided to go ahead and just do this and make a nice pocket bottom for that so I'm going to put this down and um, I'm going to just stop right there for what we've got for the tutorial for this first tutorial and we're going to move on to the next pages uh, when we come back and I apologize again for kind of my ditziness. I don't know what's wrong with me, um, but thank you for bearing with me. And um, I promise you the next ones will not be as ditzy as this one has been. So, and I'm putting this down on here, but I also, I'm gonna put a cover on here for this to hold that down. And then um, there's going to be some room up here. I may put uh, some of the chipboard stickers or if I have the sticker sheet, I don't know, I may put something else across the top just to decorate it. Maybe even like a sign to bless this house. Um, I'll have to look and see what I've got that has some uh, length to it. And um, we can put that down onto here. All right, so I know I didn't get too far in this first tutorial, but I will get much further in the next, the second and the third. Um, this was um, just getting you started with making your album and figuring out what we were going to do with everything, and I will see you back here in the next one. I just want to tell you thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I hope you have fun crafting. Thank you.